No, it was the blood for me. Thank you, Jesus. One day when all was lost, he died upon a cross. I know it was the blood for me. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon a cross. And I know it was the blood for me. It was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon a cross. And I know it was the blood for me. They pierced the man inside. They pierced the man inside. Here many me. me. One day when I was lost, he died upon a cross, and I know it was the blood for me. He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon a cross, and I know it was the blood for me. It was my Savior's blood, was my Savior's blood, was my Savior's blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon a cross. And I know it was a blood for me. Praise God. It was the blood for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. What you did is a wonderful, awesome thing. Man, you have praise on the inside. Praise God. To just make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Understand the work that he has done for us, through us. Yes, Lord, thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for this day. Praise God. I see some folks coming in now. Thank God and welcome, everyone. If you're listening on YouTube, welcome, welcome to Iron Sharpens Iron. We thank God for you. Thank God for this day. Thank God for another week. Praise God to come together in fellowship. So um, thank you all. You all are welcomed. Um, those that have been listening that have not actually joined us, you're always welcome to join us every Tuesday, 7 p.m. right here. Praise God. We would love to have you. There's no big eyes or little use here. We all come together to encourage each other, uplift one another, and we learn from one another. Praise God. So um, as folks continue to join us, we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep it moving along. We like to start on time. Um, so we're going to do that. Um, again, the welcome to Iron Sharpens Iron, um, where we come together for fellowship and Bible study weekly. Um, our mission is just to come together, fellowship, and to build genuine godly relationships. That's that's our that's that's our uh, mission to come together, not only to learn in the Word and sharpen each other in the Word and and to be taught, but also to build godly genuine relationships that's important especially in a time and an age where you know relationships are good healthy genuine relationships are far and in between praise god so you know it's it's, it's important to have healthy godly relationships and 
one way of doing that is coming together and fellowship and getting to know one another in a real kind of way. Praise God. So I thank God for uh, the fellowships that we have been blessed to have. Uh, one scripture I want to share with you is 1 John 3, 23. And this is his command to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another. That is the command. And um, so we do, we must love one another um, as well as believe and have faith in the son of God. So I just want to go over a couple of things. Um, when we come together um, in fellowship, what we like to do is when you um, come into the group, we like for you to put your mute buttons on so that we don't get any of your background distractions. Um, as we get into the study, if you have a thought you like to share or um, something that God's put on your heart, we actually to unmute yourself, make your point. And then if you will kindly put your mute button back on so that we can respond and um, if need be um, to what your comment is. And so um, after about 30, 40 minutes, it logs us off automatically. Um, but then we log right back on and um, we log back on and we finish our thought, any last minute thoughts, any last requests, and then we pray out for the evening. And that's usually typically how it goes. Now, if God wants to move anytime during our fellowship, um, I just want to say anytime during our fellowship, we let the Holy Spirit have its way. You can plan how you want it to go. But when you see when we see the spirit of God moving, we don't know which way we're going to go in, in, in our um, Bible study and fellowship. It may be a testimony. I mean, we just don't know. So whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do, we don't uh, the, the Holy Spirit is not in a box. And uh, we just allow the Holy Spirit to move and God to move however he chooses to, because he knows what's best and someone may need that. So um, I just wanted to say that. So we're going to go ahead and pray. I'll go ahead and pray and then we'll um, get started. We'll be in the um, hands and the next voice will be of my husband who will be conducting the Bible study on tonight. Praise God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father, for being just so good to us. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for Lord, just keeping us. Oh God, I thank you. I know I had a challenging day on today, but Lord, I thank you. Even in the challenging days for challenges come to strengthen us. Challenges come to test us. Challenges come to show us where we're at. Challenges come to help us to grow father God and challenges help us to stand on our faith. So I thank you for the challenges as well. Praise God. I thank you for um, each person that's present right now. Those that are listening, Father God, I pray that your word will go forth, Father, that Lord, that you will um, be in the midst of us on tonight, Lord, that you will teach us. We need to be taught. We pray and ask that you will teach us, that you will fill us with your word, Father God, that you will give us the word that we need for correction, that you will give us the word that we need to be to to be clear, Lord, on just where we're going and, and how we're walking, Lord. So we just pray because you are um, you are our direction. You're our light. So, Father, we need you. We can't do anything without you. So we just invite you in on tonight. We have ears to listen and our hearts to receive what it is you are trying to speak and say to us on tonight. Father God, have your way. We thank you and we love you. I thank you for this moment right now. I thank you for this opportunity. And I thank you for everyone, everyone that's present in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Can't hear you, hon. Yeah. Brother Lemuel, God bless you, brother. Hey. God bless you, you and Michelle. You were saying Amen. Michelle yeah, about challenge, you. about the challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that experience today. Something says just go out there and do it, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it worked. You know, Praise God. you know, yeah. Right, like, right. Well, thank you, Jesus. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Absolutely. That's beautiful, brother. Good testimony. We'll have to hear that. Yes. God definitely does work when we work it. Amen. One of the good things I love, Lemuel, about how the way the Lord works is that once you put the plan into action, then you will see God 
perform. <laughs> you hear me? Amen. Amen. And yeah, and, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a that's a beautiful, beautiful thing right there. You know, amen. He knows our every move. He knows our every step. Hallelujah. We're gracious to have a, a um just a wonderful, okay. awesome God that look over us, protect us, and guide us and just show us the way. In this wonderful world we got today, it's beautiful because we need to know our role. We're going to look at some things. I titled this word because I got it from the Apostle Paul out this word from henceforth. There is a time that he got done dealing with his people and he decided to abandon that because they were giving him a hard time and to take the word to the Gentiles. Now, before we get caught up, let us understand that back in the biblical days, it was broken up into two parts. Either you were a Jew or you were a Gentile. Being a Jew mean you believed in God. Being a Gentile mean you didn't believe in God. It wasn't a people. It was their culture. Being a Jew was a culture. This is the thing that we have to understand. Let us let the Holy Ghost remind us back in Tyrathyra, when the Apostle Paul and Silas came through there, and the lady with purple that was doing sorcery, and she was getting the state's money, because you know they needed their taxes, but one thing she said out of her mouth, for here go the men that come to show us the way, what she was truth, even though she was standing false. So they took the Apostle Paul and Silas and threw him in jail because they was messing up the state's money. Now, let us understand, after they left from there, they went down to Thessalonica, preaching the word. The Jews said, here go these men that come to flip the world upside down. And they ran into the house of Jason looking for them. But they had escaped. And after Jason secured bond, then they had let them out. The Apostle Paul and Silas and Timotheus, they went from there to Berea. When they got to Berea, the Apostle Paul said, man, these guys down here are more noble because they searched the word that he was saying to make sure these things were so. Something that the Jews before then was not doing. They were very opinionated and stuck in their own way that they wouldn't even search the word to see what he was saying was so. Now the Jews who down in Thessalonica who had summoned up this group called the Bazer Zord. There were some lewd fellas to join them, to go against the Apostle Paul and them. All of these Jews and these people made their way down to Perea, chasing these guys from country to country. They had to, to push the Apostle Paul out in the boat and get him to Athens. And Silas and Timotheus were stuck there. That's how bad that these people were on their heels, that they had to rush the Apostle Paul in the boat to Athens. He's finally making his way down to Corinth, the Apostle Paul is. We're going to look at this word, how it got to a point where Timotheus and Silas finally got back down to them after leaving Macedonia, which is a region. That is where Thessalonica and Berea, all of them are in Macedonia in that region. So as we start in this word, let us understand, after people around you start not hearing what you got to say, it's okay. Take that word out there to the people that God has commissioned you to take it to, that are going to receive that word. But for us to understand this, because out here in the world now, you got a lot of people talking about Jews were scattered, there, and they were. But know that there was Gentiles also that God had made a way for them to come on into the fold. Starting right here at the Gospel of John at 10, 14 through 16, Understand that Jesus is down in the feast day and he is talking to the religious leader of Israel. He is of Israel as well himself. And he's telling them that he is from the father. And if anybody want to go to the father, they have to come through him, which is the front door. Whoever climb up through the back is a thief and a robber. He also was telling them that they were hirelings. And if both come, they're going to flee because their heart is not in it. Let us start right here at 14. I am the good shepherd, Jesus is telling them, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. 
as the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Let us understand, Jesus is coming to lay down his life. That's how much he is willing to put on the line. He said, all whoever came before he came into your life is a thief and a robber. Everybody just want money. That's all they want. After they settle down, they, you got to pay for it. You got to pay for something. But he's coming to put his life on the line, and you ain't got to pay for it. Amen. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd, which is our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Remember, the Father judges no man, but have committed all judgment unto the Son. Father is not going to, going to judge us. He's committed that into our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They're on one accord, and that's why it always goes back to one. But we have to understand this. Hallelujah. So this synopsis right here, we got to understand. Jesus is talking to the leaders of Jerusalem. He is a part of the flock. He is a part of the flock of Israel himself. But he is telling them he have other people that are not of this flock, which is the same flock of them, that are going to hear his word and come into the fold. Hallelujah. Anybody? Anybody want to expound on that right now? Amen. That's from the Holy Ghost. That's beautiful. I ain't read that scripture in so long, but I thank Jesus for reminding me that he give us the word. He operate through us to bring this word into life. You got a lot of people out there talking about Jesus only went to Israel. That's because they're not understanding the time. And for there to be a testament, there have to be a testator. That means Jesus got to die to leave a will. So he was in the Old Testament laws of doing things. That's why when you hear him tell the lady, why, why should I give the, the, the dogs the dogs bread? I mean, the giving the children's bread to dogs. It always has to start mm -hmm. at the house of his own house before it get brought out to the others. Hallelujah. Do you know how you said the other flock? We hear yes, sir. his voice, and it, it, it's continuing today. Yes. You know, uh, different churches is going places, you know, like in Costa Rica, mm -hmm. going to places in South America, places in even Africa, you know, in villages, you know, right. and spreading the word. It's just amazing, you know. Yeah. And they're receiving it. And then in some places in Africa, they're building these small churches, you know, little hut churches they were showing you know, on the film one day. So, getting out yeah. there, it's getting it spreading. That word is spreading. That's why we got to be able to get on the right tune with Christ. Because he's giving us time. He's a patient God. Don't you know he can come right now in the blink of an eye? But he's so humble and so patient that he's giving us time to receive salvation so we do not be lost. But we got to be able to understand this. Let us look right here. Let's start right here in Acts 18, 1 through 8. After these things, Paul departed from Athens. He's just now leaving. And came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontius, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. So we see the Apostle Paul just getting back down to Corinth, and he he going to go aboard with Aquila and Priscilla. They're already down there. They just came from Rome because Claudius Caesar was making all the Jews leave from Rome because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. The Apostle Paul did, and because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought for by their occupation they were tent makers. So they put together, they shaped tents. They were tent makers by operation, I mean by occupation. And he reasoned with them in the synagogue. Just like I said, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. It didn't take God to tell him to go do what he needed to do unless it was specific in fashion. He went and did what he do best and that's preach the gospel. He reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath 
and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, they just now getting back down there since the Apostle Paul had to be shipped out on the ship to Athens. Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified of the Jews that Jesus was Christ. Now I want to stop right here for a minute. And the reason why I want to stop here because I want to go back up here because it almost shows us when he was in the synagogue reasoning with them that he was doing apologetics. Because why would God all of a sudden press him in the spirit when they get down there to preach Jesus Christ, which he knew that they were going to be against? So he reasoned with them in the synagogue, listening to them, you know, speaking nice to them, showing them this way, that way. And when he opposed, and when they opposed themselves and blasphemy, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own hands. I am clean from henceforth, and I will go unto the Gentile. So we see there is a time that the Apostle Paul was bringing that word to the Jews as people, but they wouldn't hear him. They chased him, kicked him. Stoned them, doing all kinds of stuff. He, he used long suffering with them. But there is a time where he said, I am clean from henceforth. I will go on to the Gentiles. So he's not going to be bound with it with your blood on his hands because he'd been trying to bring you the word. But since you don't want to hear it, it was time for him to spread out and bring that word to the rest of the world. Now let's go back and see what they oppose themselves mean and blasphemy. And when they oppose themselves, when we look at oppose themselves, they decided that one does not support. See, when you're in the gospel with somebody and they in there opposing you and acting like they don't want to support scripture, you can make a move. Not only did they do that, but they blasphemy like they do today. And he shook his raiment and said unto them, your blood be upon your own head. Heads, I am clean from henceforth. I will go unto the Gentiles. Amen. That's a big statement there. That's a big word there. Because we see that although, you know, Jesus came to his own house, they didn't want to listen to him. We see the Apostle Paul time again, who had the biggest resume of them all, who sat up under the foot of Gamaliel, who was the one of the biggest doctorate, had a doctorate in the law, in the Nicene court, everybody looked to Gamaliel. The Apostle Paul was right there with him. He was next in command. But he said he counted all dumb once he ran into Christ Jesus because Christ showed him through the wisdom and the spirit that all that you were trying to gain was dumb and gave him a different wisdom, which is of heavenly things. Amen. Anybody? Anybody want to speak on that? Well, I, I think it's that, uh, well, he was talking to the Jews, wasn't he? You know, Paul? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's just, it, it, you know, you have religion. You get what I'm saying? You have religion. Then you have, you know, those who really, uh, really know Jesus Christ. So I, th I think the Jews just couldn't accept what Paul was saying because of their uh, religious. You know, they have always, it's always been this way. It's not going to change. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to accept change. Right, right. You know, I like yeah. That. Good job, brother. I like that. That's what this is showing us. Let me, I like that. That we are going to have to have to put ourselves in position to accept change when it comes. You can't stay the same. You got to change up out of that. You know, if they didn't listen to Jesus down at the feast day, we know there was going to be problems with them listening to a man by the name of Apostle Paul. But look what makes this a little bit more you would think greater is that the Apostle Paul, even though Jesus ascended from heaven, the Apostle Paul grew up with them with that Pharisee mindset persecuting the church, doing everything for them and with them. But look, at when he came to the knowledge of the truth, they still wouldn't accept him. 
but some did. Let's finish up. And he departed thence and entered to a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshiped God whose house joined hard to the synagogue. So we see Justin's house joined hard to that same synagogue that wouldn't accept him. Those Jews in there that wouldn't accept him. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians here and believed and were baptized. Why is it always the chief rulers, but not the people that sit up under them, that come to the word and hear it and get saved? Man, that's deep. You got to be a leader. You can't be no follower. Jesus asked the question, who do men say I am? And then right after that, he said, who do you say I am? It's not about no crowd. Who do you say Jesus is? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. So we see people did get saved. We see Crispus and Justice in his house. Crispus' house, I mean, Justice's house, they got saved. They were baptized. Many of the Corinthians were baptized. So you can't tell me that the Gentiles are not going to hear the word of God like Jesus told us at the feast day, and they're going to come in to be onto one fold. They're going to come together because of Jesus' word. Amen. We must understand this, that before things operate, they work in the spirit. Right here at John 15 and 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. See, when Jesus chose us, when the father drew him, drew us to, you know, Jesus, he ordained us. He gave us that oil that builds the fruits of the spirit in us. You that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain. Now, remember when you received of the ordainment of Christ, the oil, you're going to be growing in Galatians 5, 22, your fruit, but you're going to go out here amongst some wolves. And it said, don't you lose your fruit. Let your fruit remain. Amen. Yeah, because you know, because there's so many people can you know convince you it's not that, but you you have to stay foreign, you know. And uh, yeah, because I, I remember one day I was talking to somebody about you know Jesus Christ and and he just just couldn't you know he just see see it a different way than I did you know, so. And it's, like, and it's like and it's like that. Yeah. It's like that because yeah. remember, everybody don't have the same spirit. Christ is bringing us up on one accord with His spirit. So everybody don't believe. That's why right here in Proverbs fourteen fifteen, the select, the simple believe every word. They got people out here that believe anything somebody say, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. See, I'm I'm glad Jesus made me this type of way. When you tell me about to go do something. I don't already searched it and look well ahead to it. Where are we going? And people are not doing that today. They're taking whatever people say that goes and caters along with their heart, and they're going on with that. They're not looking in the scripture to make sure these things are so. Look well to your yeah. going. Mm -hmm. You got something you want to say? No, I didn't have anything to say at this time. I'm just listening tonight. Oh, man, that's a good word right here. I think this is a good word for, um, you know, for apologetic. That just means defending the gospel. We did a word the other day, the seven principal points we did on a men's study Sunday. And remember, people are going to be coming up with all kinds of things. But if we know the truth, we got a duty to defend the truth. So this way, this way right here, you know, you got this word out here where people are talking about that people, <laughs> yeah, I can't even believe it. People are, if you're not a part of Israel, if you're not black, you're not going to heaven. And this is the thing that we got to understand. It's what Christ says. This is what Christ was telling them at the feast day. 
It's what God says goes, not what you say. You got to get out of that old tradition that you fell in because it was by your own gains anyway. It wasn't nothing of God because had it been of God, you would have seen God coming. Amen. Let us understand that 2 Corinthians 10, 18, for not he that commanded himself is approved, but whom the Lord commanded. So this ain't no go to school and you charge yourself out there and go. This ain't one of those situations. It's who the Lord commanded to approve. Not if you approve yourself. Because you got to take, like the mule was saying, you got to be able to take that right spirit out there and that right teaching out there. If not, then you're getting in the way. The word tells us don't trust in man. Wait on salvation. It's a joy to wait on salvation. Amen. Yeah, you. Oh. Do I have to uh, hold the microphone on? Yeah. Yeah, you have to uh, be accepted by uh, God. You know, you have to really know it's from God. Because, uh, you know, some guys, well, some preachers, they, they just steps out there. You know, they never had any uh, studying the Word and going to school, you know, certain schools and understanding the Word, you know. But, uh, but you know, you know, uh, it's God. If you uh, listen to the pastors, you know. Um, now, just to jump well, you know, what I'm trying to say, you know, the true, you know, whether it's true or not. That's how I put it. If it's if that pastor sticks with the word of God, I put it that way. And remember, too, also to come huh? along with that, too, Lemil, is that that's why the Lord tells us get to know Him first, then everything else will be added unto us. Because if you go in there and you don't know the ways of God, then you don't know what that man is. Everything sounds good to you. That's true. So you got to be careful. That's why we say Philippians mm -hmm. five, 2 and 5, to bring yourself to the word so you can let that mind be in you. It's also in Christ Jesus. Then when you go fellowship, you will know what that man's saying, if he's lined up or not. Mm -hmm. But if you go in there with a carnal mind that we're told not to lean on, I'm not saying don't go if you know you're trying to learn, but what I'm saying is, we have to be careful. That's why a lot of people are stuck up in these, these um, places now and they can't go nowhere because they really do believe that that is what it is. And you have to be careful. So we got less than a minute. We're going to log off and log back on and we'll finish out if anybody got any comments. I believe I got one more scripture. This was a good word. This was a good word today. So we could know that we spread the gospel to everybody. We spread it to everybody, not just our own, not just to Israel. And they still rejected Jesus. 